Star Fox did a barrel roll straight onto your Super NES back in 1993. Developed and published by Nintendo, Star Fox was hyped up to be the poster child for the brand new Super FX chip that could be stuck inside standard Super NES game cartridges, allowing for some basic polygonal graphics that wasn't possible on the system otherwise. Presented as an arcade-style space shooter, Star Fox looked absolutely incredible the first time anyone saw it, since graphics like these were usually reserved for much more powerful arcade games or expensive PCs. Being able to play a fully polygonal game right on your Super Nintendo was a game changer that Nintendo hoped would help extend the life of the Super NES for several more years by using the Super FX chip instead of making people buy a whole new console. So was Star Fox just as good as it looked, or was the game trying to do a bit too much with a system that was never made for this kind of game? Well, grab your favorite gibberish-speaking sidekicks, because we're about to see if Star Fox was as super as the chip that powered it. Start up Star Fox and you're immediately treated to an awesome Star Wars-inspired opening that shows off some of those glorious polygons in the form of a massive warship sent by the evil Andros bearing down on Fox McCloud's home planet. If you can manage to keep your jaw from dislocating from the 17 or so polygons moving around on your TV screen, then go ahead and press start to get into the game. Before you begin though, you're given a few controller setups to choose from, along with an optional training mode that allows you to come to grips with moving your ship around. Once you're confident in your pilot skills, it's off to the map screen, where you're given three different paths to take to get to Andros and end the war once and for all. All three paths are five to six stages long, with each one being harder than the last, so it's probably best to choose the default middle path if this is your first time piloting the R-Wing into battle. From there, you'll get a quick briefing by some weird dog colonel guy, and then it's off to do battle with the worst that Andros can throw at you. Get into the game and it's time to start shooting up some of the blockiest spaceships you've ever seen. That's okay though, since there's more than enough things to shoot at to keep your mind off of just how bad Star Fox looks these days. Your main form of shooting things down are your laser guns that fire off in front of you, but being accurate with these will actually take some getting used to, since your ship will shoot in the direction you currently have it pointing, making it kind of hard to tell where your shots will go at certain angles. Things certainly aren't helped much with an awkward camera that just sort of seems to lazily hover behind you, making shooting at stuff in general feel a bit slow and inaccurate overall. This was probably my biggest gripe with the game as a kid, since it never seemed like I could line up a shot when I most needed to, even when it looked like I should be on target. Eventually I kinda got the hang of it, but even then there were times when I would miss an easy target just because I was at a weird angle and couldn't tell where my shot was gonna go. In addition to your lasers, you also get a screen clearing bomb that works especially well on bosses. <laughs> Seriously, if you have a few of these bombs saved up, you can take down just about every boss in the game without ever firing a laser at it. Sadly, you only get a limited amount of those bombs and you can only refill them by collecting them throughout the stages, so maybe save them for the bosses and stages that give you the most problems. Besides blowing stuff up, you'll need to master maneuvering your R-Wing around, which can sometimes feel just as clunky as shooting at things. Basic movement around the screen is easy enough, but it's when the game wants you to make quick exact movements that things start to get frustrating. Slamming into walls and objects in tight areas due to the sluggish movement of your ship will sadly be fairly common until you just learn to memorize the levels. The game does at least give you a few different camera angles to help you judge distance, with the cockpit view being the most useful at doing so, but you can only use use that view in space levels for some reason, which kind of makes it useless. While all this probably makes it sound like Star Fox is an unplayable mess, it's not by any means. It's actually a fairly simple shooter that just requires a bit of patience to master, and once you do, you'll be shooting and barrel rolling through stages like it's nothing. As mentioned before, your path through Star Fox is chosen before you start the game, so you won't be seeing all the different levels in a single playthrough. To do that, you'll need to beat each of the three paths to get the complete Star Fox experience, and it's more than worth it to do so. Just about every single level on each path feels completely different than the last, with new enemies and bosses in each one. The planets themselves are the real highlights here, with all of them having unique obstacles and situations that make them a ton of fun to blast through over and over again. And while the space stages 
challenges are probably the least interesting of the bunch, the game does at least do a nice job of adding stuff like a huge armada of ships into the mix just when you think you couldn't possibly play another boring stage in the middle of space. Honestly, the space stages aren't all that bad, I just always enjoy the variety of planets more than the void of space. The bosses are also worth playing through each path just to see what the game has waiting for you at the end of every level. Most are massive monstrosities that fill the screen and only exist to shoot everything they have at your ship, along with a few weak points that you'll need to focus on while dodging laser fire and whatever the hell else is coming at you. Their unique designs also stand out, with some being huge starships with cannons all over them, or alien-like monstrosities that span the entirety of the screen. One of my favorites isn't even a ship or an alien, but actually a massive generator where you have to constantly dodge electricity as the room spins around you until you're able to shoot the core and ultimately destroy the entire ship in the most awesome two frame per second explosion I've ever seen. All of this together makes each one of Star Fox's paths feel completely different from each other, making you want to immediately start over as soon as you beat one just to see what'll be in the next. Unfortunately, none of the paths are very long, but they're all so much fun that you'll probably end up playing through them multiple times just to get a better score. While Star Fox is genuinely fun, it still has a few problems that sucked back when it was released and has only gotten worse with the passage of time. We've already mentioned the sometimes annoying camera, but by far the biggest problem in the game you've probably noticed throughout this video is the frame rate. The game never seems to go above 15 frames per second when anything is on screen, and sinks even lower when things get hectic. This makes the game's already sluggish controls feel even worse, and can actually cause you to run into objects and enemy fire on a regular basis due to just how choppy it can get. Thankfully, it never ruins the game, but it's a constant issue that you're just going to have to get used to and account for. Also, for all those Super FX graphics and advertisements claiming full 3D movement, Star Fox is unfortunately nothing more than a basic rail shooter with very little freedom of movement at all. You're constantly being pulled forward with your only maneuvering being able to fly to the edge of the screen a bit before it pushes you back to the center. This could make a lot of the stages, especially the space stages, feel like nothing more than a shooting gallery rather than piloting a ship. That's not to say it isn't fun and maybe us kids should have had a more realistic expectation for what a Super NES game could be, but it still kind of sucked when we all found out Star Fox was nothing more than lining up a cursor and shooting at stuff, rather than the full-on space flight sim Nintendo wanted us to think it was. We also couldn't talk about annoying things in Star Fox without mentioning your ever-so-talkative teammates. For the most part, they're content with just being in the background and never really getting in the way besides their constant jibber-jabber. Other times, though, they'll need your help with shooting down an enemy, or they'll just run off in front of you to chase an enemy they want to kill. Either way is super annoying due to them almost always getting in your line of fire and then complaining about it incessantly when you do inevitably shoot them. It can already be challenging enough to line up enemies in this game, and when your own teammates are preventing you from doing so, it makes it even more maddening. Even worse, you have to take your eyes away from the action and look down at a speech box at the bottom of the screen if you want to even know what they're saying, which almost always results in you getting hit in the process. And while their annoying gibberish speak may be endearing to some, I just always ended up turning turning down the volume and turning up my stereo before the end of stage 2 just so I didn't have to listen to it anymore. Still though, even with all of its problems, Star Fox is still totally playable somehow to this day, but will unfortunately continue to age way worse than other Super NES classics due to its 3D graphics. Overall, Star Fox is still thought of as one of the Super Nintendo's best games. Again, it probably sounds like I'm kinda hating on the game a lot in this review, but it all comes with an equal amount of praise. The simple but fun gameplay still shines through now, even if those Super FX polygons look like a hot mess these days. Honestly, it's still amazing what the Super FX chip could even do on a system that was never known for its processing power. Sadly though, Star Fox was probably the best known of a fairly small amount of games that ever used the FX chip, as the chip's cost was unfortunately too high to really catch on with other developers. Even Star Fox's own Super NES sequel was eventually cancelled due to cost and development factors, along with the looming launch of the Nintendo 64. And with that new system came the far superior Star Fox 64, which unfortunately kind of makes the original Star Fox look like a cool tech demo relic rather than a must-play classic game these days. Still though, if you ever want to see where Fox McCloud got his start, I think you'll still have a lot of fun with this game as long as you're just able to forgive a lot of the problems the game has. 
If you can, then this is definitely one fox you won't regret saving the galaxy with.